Hundreds of new layoffs at one of the big three automakers, where the cuts happened and what it means for the future of the company. Good afternoon, Paula. Well, good afternoon to you, Karen, and everybody. Michigan lawmakers give the green light, uh, and I'll show Michiganders which plants they now have the green thumb to grow anywhere on their property. But first, Ron, this weather, I know you're not the weather maker, you're the weather man, but what on earth? Well, Paula, thank you for giving us a visual. It is windy, it is rainy. We see it right there. Now, this rain is going to be moving out of the area and replacing skies with clear conditions. I'll tell you when that change happens first at four. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. A Warren man accused of attacking his family is dead this afternoon. Within just the last 30 minutes, we received calls into our newsroom about police shooting and killing the unnamed man near Ryan Road and 11 Mile. Sean Lay at the scene where he's been piecing together what exactly happened today. How did this all start, Sean? You're getting calls in the newsroom, not surprising. This was alarming here. We were getting sources to me on my phone saying a young man was inside a home here on the corner on Garber at Walker. You see the home right there with the blue car assaulting family members, and there was more to it than that. Not just assaulting his own family members, but this kid is around 18 to 22 years old, and he apparently had a gun, a 9 millimeter weapon. Our cameras are here. Let's take you uh, a little closer to the scene. This is what it's looked like here since 1.30 today. A massive police presence and they were coming to help this family. Family members calling 911 saying erratic behavior with a family member believed, believed to be a son, 20, 18 to 22, and they were being assaulted. And so police came here to help, and they couldn't even knock yet before someone, the, 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 eight, the young man, emerged from the home with a handgun. Here's what happened next. Uh, several officers were dispatched here for uh, trouble with the subject, uh, domestic violence. Uh, when officers arrived, they attempted to make contact at the front door. Uh, they went around to the back door of the home. Uh, at that time, a subject came out of the front of the house. Uh, we're not sure if it was through the garage or through the front door. Uh, as he turned the corner, uh, he was armed with a semi-automatic handgun, uh, pointed at officers, at which time officers gave warnings. Uh, the subject refused to drop his weapon and shots were fired. Pointed right, came around the corner. Was he looking for those officers and pointing the gun at them? It appears, yes. It, it appears he intentionally came around, uh, pointed his weapon at the officers, and the officers uh, at that point uh, fired several times. Back here live, let's talk about firing several times. We're talking about three Warren police officers firing a total of 10 shots here. And if you listen to uh, the, the officer that spoke to us, he, the man comes out of the home with that 9mm, turns the corner, was going after the officers and wouldn't put the gun down. Was he going after them or was this kind of a suicide by police officer situation? Police say very possible. That would have, could have been the situation. They had to fire those shots and that uh, young man is deceased right now. The family inside, they were not hurt, but of course they heard all of this right outside the door, Karen. All right, thank you, Sean. Also breaking right now, Detroit police have reopened the road directly behind Local 4 here over on Howard Street. That's after a fire at one of DTE's electric substations. Our parking garage was blocked until just about 20 minutes ago while fire crews worked to make sure those flames were out. The cause of the fire under investigation, we're told, power at the facility is temporarily shut off while crews work to find out exactly what happened. Also new this hour, we now know Clinton Township Police and Fire have completed their physical investigation into that deadly blast at a Clinton Township business. So that means investigators are no longer going out to the destroyed vape supply shop and warehouse to gather evidence. But there's still so much more to be done, like analyzing what's been collected in the paperwork before turning over their findings to the county prosecutor. Now, to be clear, it doesn't mean additional investigations are not still ongoing at a state and a national level. As you may recall, the on-site investigation led by the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms was supposed to start in March. But that didn't happen because the investigating agencies could not coordinate their schedules, which included Michigan State Police, Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, and Michigan Emergency Management Association. The March 4th blast at Goose Smoke Shop and the Select Distributors Wholesale Warehouse rocked central Macomb County. It sent debris up to two miles away. Now, one of an estimated 1,000 metal canisters struck and killed a 19-year-old man and hurt a firefighter. As of today, the cause 
of that blast, still unknown, but we do know the EPA is leading the cleanup efforts. Jennifer Crumbly is settling into her home for the next 10 to 15 years at the Huron Valley Women's Correctional Facility that's over in Ypsilanti. She's already served 861 days in jail while awaiting trial and sentencing and has been instructed to have no contact with the families of the victims. As of right now, it's unclear if she'll be in the general population or protective custody. We're also waiting to see where James Crumbly will serve the rest of his sentence. New at four, more job cuts are announced at Stellantis, this time impacting more than 200 workers at a Detroit warehousing facility and beginning on March 31st. Now, these employees are part of a supplemental manufacturing workforce and called to help cover shifts for regular full-time workers at facilities. Stellantis sent us the statement about the cut saying these decisions are being made to ensure its facilities are operating as efficiently as possible in accordance with the 2023 collective bargaining agreement. The skyscraper being built by Bedrock Detroit on the site of the former Hudson's building officially has a name. Bedrock just announced the building will be called Hudson's Detroit. At today's Michigan Chronicles Pancakes and Politics event in downtown Detroit, the president and CEO of Barton Mallow Holdings talked about crews raising that final bean into place this week as part of what's called the topping off. The Hudson site skyscraper is now the second tallest building in Detroit, behind only the 727-foot-tall central tower of the Renson. Hudson's, I think, represents so much. Its history, its legacy, uh, and as well its future, an opportunity for, for Detroit. And so being able to celebrate a milestone like lifting the final beam, it's a tradition in our industry, and it was a really great celebration and a uh, big, big milestone for us. Also on top of mind at today's event, the safety on the Ambassador Bridge after what happened in Baltimore. Christy McDonald will have more on that at 6. And don't forget, this room will be full again next month for our third series. It's on May 23rd, and you can see it stream live on Local 4 Plus and click on Detroit.com. New road project is underway on the I-96 Flex route. Crews are reducing the northbound ramp from 275 to westbound 96 to just one lane. So then tomorrow, westbound 96 drivers will be moved to the eastbound side from 275 to Kent Lake Road. This is all part of that Rebuilding Michigan program, which aims to rebuild the state's highways. Time now for our first look at that forecast, Ron. The wind, the rain, it's here, it's messy today. So how long is it going to stay through the weekend? Karen, it has been messy out there. Now the wind is going to stick around a little bit longer. The rain coming to an end this evening. It's cloudy, windy, and rainy, as you mentioned, across the area. Those temperatures on the cool side as well. We're in the 40s and lower 50s out there. So somewhere hovering right around 50 degrees as we have at Metro Airport. We have the rain shower still with us. The Zach Track 4D radar showing it across southeast Michigan. Some of the more moderate rainfall right now as you get into the Port Huron area. Something that we are going to be tracking and again winding down as we get over the next couple of hours. So the rain showers mostly over south. Southeast Michigan clearing out as you go over toward the west into the Lansing area. These showers winding down for tonight. Tomorrow, the wind still with us. Changing conditions in store for us with our forecast. Here are those temperatures for the rest of the evening. We're cooling down into the mid-40s, closer to midnight. It is a little chilly out there. All right. Thanks, Ron. New hope for monarch butter butterflies as their sole source of survival as a species gets a helping hand from both houses of the Michigan Legislature. Paula Tubman joins us now from downtown Rochester at a budding butterfly garden to explain how milkweeds have been removed from the so-called naughty list. All right, you got my attention, Paula. Yeah. Good, and uh, well, Ron's talking about when, when, what when? I, I don't know what when. Listen, we all know that Michigan, like so many other states, uh, Michigan has been fighting these invasive species. And so it, for a long, long while, milkweed has been placed in that same category with the noxious group of nuisance, plant, <laughs> of nuisance plants. However, as you said, a, Apparently, nature can get both sides of the aisle to agree. Of course, they had a little bit of help from a local woman. For many years, milkweed has been on the bad list for municipalities, lumped in with the likes of Canada thistle, wild carrot, various mustard plants, and the dreaded poison sumacs and ivies, which meant taking it down and eradicating it was basically desirable and highly encouraged as a way to tamp down the spread of noxious plants. But milkweed is anything but noxious to Mother Nature. And in fact, 
is the only way super pollinators like monarch butterflies can survive because milkweeds are the only plants in which the female monarch will lay her eggs and the ensuing caterpillars will feed. It was very disappointing to people when they wanted to try to save the monarch butterfly that they couldn't be if their municipality said it was a noxious weed. Marilyn Trent didn't know any of that stuff until one day she got a flyer in the mail. And I got a letter from the Environmental Defense Fund that said the monarch butterfly was in decline by 90%. She became a warrior, not only founding the Rochester Pollinators Organization, but taking the fight to protect milkweed to Lansing. And this year, her efforts and those of many others have paid off. House Bill 4857 was introduced uh, by Representative Steckloff last year to the Agricultural Committee to delist milkweed from the noxious weed list of all municipalities and cities. What this means is that because milkweed is no longer considered a noxious weed, it can be protected, something the city of Rochester had already dived into. Milkweed is something that we've been trying to kind of actively plant in the city. Um, the city is uh, part of the Monarch Butterfly Pledge, um, so we really care about the monarch butterflies and they care about milkweed. Um, and we're also trying to find ways to preserve uh, you know, natural landscapes. It also means that where milkweed grows wild, municipalities now have legal permission to protect it. These plants along the byways, in the right of ways, so in the common areas of uh, public lands where you really sh shouldn't be mowing. It's just if you're wa it's gas, you're wasting gas, time, money, and you're killing the insects. Reducing our mowed areas and our lawns is extremely um, necessary for restoring our ecologies. Yeah, you know, we all know that many, many pollinator allies have been getting, curating, and cultivating milkweed. Uh, the, the point of this is that now, because it's no longer a noxious plant, you have the official legal green light to do so. That's, that's, that's what you call progress. Those monarchs, Karen, they need to stay in Mexico right now. This is not friendly to them. It is a <laughs> unfriendly afternoon, but hopefully it's going to get better it's soon. Unfriendly. Hang in there, Paula. <laughs>